This is another reading from the Vampire Armand. As I've said before, um, the book is about the vampire metaphor, the metaphor of the person who se seems to be lost to God or lost from God, yet searching for God. And this passage comes very near the end of the book. Armand, through the whole story, has been battling with his grief for his lost faith in Christ. And at one point when he saw the veil of Veronica with the image of Christ on that veil, a veil that Lestat had miraculously brought back from the first century, Armand had tried to take his own life. And he'd had a great vision then of being a priest and giving communion to the whole world. But Armand survived that. And um, he went on to be rejoined again with the other children of the night and to be once more the alienated one and once more the lost one. But at the very end, his fellow vampires want to know what it was he saw in the veil. What did he see in the face of Christ that caused him to, to risk death, to risk oblivion? What would make an immortal risk that immortality, that earthbound immortality? What was it? And Armand gives an answer that now, at the end of the book, which isn't my answer today, it's not the answer of Anne Rice to what the Veil of Veronica means. It's Armand's answer at the time. And it reflects, it reflects his alienation, and it reflects mine at the time that I wrote the book. He's being questioned about this by skeptics, by immortals who would, who would never take seriously any relic pertaining to Christ. And they ask him, well, what was it? What did you see? Why? What made you do what you did? Armand answers, you ask an old and simple question, I said, and from where I stand, you don't really know a thing. You wonder how he could have been my Lord, given this world as you describe it, and knowing what you know of the Gospels and the Testaments printed in his name. You wonder how I could have believed all that because you don't believe it. Isn't that so? Mary has nodded. Yes, I do wonder, because I know you, and I know that faith is something which you simply do not have. I was startled, but instantly I knew Marius was right. I smiled. I felt a sort of tragic, thrilling happiness suddenly. Well, I see what you mean, I said, and I'll tell you my answer. I saw Christ. A kind of bloody light. A personality. A human a presence that I felt I knew. And he wasn't the Lord God, Father Almighty, and he wasn't the maker of the universe and the whole world. And he wasn't the savior or the redeemer for sins inscribed on my soul before I was born. He wasn't the second person of the Holy Trinity, and he wasn't the theologian expounding from the Holy Mount. He wasn't those things for me, maybe for others, but not for me. But who was he then, Armand? David asked. I have your story full of marvels and suffering, yet I don't know. What was the concept of the Lord when you spoke the word? Lord, I repeated it. It doesn't mean what you think. It's spoken with too much intimacy and too much warmth. It's like a secret and sacred name, Lord. I paused and then continued. He is the Lord, yes, but only because he is the symbol of something infinitely more accessible, something infinitely more meaningful than a ruler or king or Lord can ever be. Again, I hesitated, wanting to find the right words since they were so sincere. He was my brother, I said. Yes, that is what he was, my brother, and the symbol of all brothers. And that is why he was the Lord. And that is why his core is simply love. You scorn it. You look askance at what I say. But you don't grasp the complexity of what he was. It's easy to feel, perhaps, but not so easy to really see. He was another man like me. And maybe for many of us, millions upon millions, that's all he's ever been. We're all somebody's sons and daughters, and he was somebody's son. He was human, whether he was God or not, and he was suffering, and he was doing it for things he thought were purely and universally good. And that meant that his blood might as well have been my blood too. Why, it had to be, and maybe that is the very source of his magnificence for thinkers such as me. You said I had no faith. I don't. Not in titles or in legends or in hierarchies made by other beings like ourselves. He didn't make a hierarchy, not really. He was the very thing. Well, I don't agree with Armand. 
I think he is the maker of the universe. And I think he did save us. And I think he did atone for sins we committed before we were born. I think all those things are true. But I read this to you, I read it to you because I think so many of us at some point in our lives feel exactly what Armand felt here. And that's not despair, and that's not a turning away from God, that's a step toward him. Thank you.